Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mr. Toby, and I'm the host of Musical Chairs, presented by the Vermont Symphony Orchestra's Symphony Kids. Today, we are so excited to be here at Vermont Teddy Bear Company in Shelburne for some music and fun. They've been so generous to the VSO in the past with many donations of bears for auctions and student giveaways. The factory is open for tours, so make an appointment and come on down. Later on, we're going to make a musical instrument together out of some things you may have lying around. You're going to need an empty soda can, some uncooked rice or beans, a piece of paper, and tape. So if you want to pause and see if you can find those things now, go for it. At Musical Chairs, we're learning about what instruments make up the symphony orchestra. All of the instruments belong to what we call instrument families. An instrument family is a group of instruments that share something very special in common. Now here's a hint. Can some of you think of different ways that musical instruments create sound? Good thinking. Some instruments are plucked and bowed. Some instruments are shaken and struck. Some instruments are played with our breath and some instruments are played with our mouth. Instrument families are a lot like ingredients in a recipe. When you put them all together, you get something tastefully magical. The orchestra is made up of four families of instruments. The strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. How about this fluffy family of bear cubs? Do they belong in the orchestra? No way! Today we're gonna to be learning about the percussion family. And my friend Jenna here is ready. A long time ago, the percussion family started with this. That's right, sticks. And they are one of the first musical instruments. Now ancient people used sticks like these to beat out rhythms to accompany their ceremonies, dances, and rituals. But these sticks, they're not very loud, are they? And what if they had a thousand people at their ceremony, their dance, or their ritual? They probably said, hmm, how can we make our rhythms louder? How can we make music? So they started hitting rocks with their sticks. Then they started hitting the sides of hollow logs. Then our ancient human friends figured out that they could stretch an animal skin over the end of a hollow log. And they invented the drum. This is called a snare drum. And it's in the percussion section of the orchestra. Percussion instruments are played by either striking with hands, sticks, or mallets. Shaking or scraping. Some percussion instruments are non-pitched and are used for rhythms, like claves. And some percussion instruments are pitched and used for melodies, like the xylophone. Now in the orchestra, the musicians who play percussion instruments usually sit all the way in the back. And there are many, many percussion instruments that can be used in an orchestra. But the most common ones are timpani, xylophone, cymbals, triangle, snare drum, bass drum, tambourine, maracas, gongs, and chimes. Woo! To learn some more about today's subject, we've brought a panel of experts. We are joined today by some special guests who are all members of the Vermont Symphony Orchestra. First up is Tom. Hi, Toby. Thanks for having me. I'm going to start by talking more about an instrument you've already seen, the snare drum. As Toby said, drums originated when an animal skin was stretched across some kind of shell, probably a hollowed out log. We use plastic heads now, and this is not a hollowed out log. This drum has two heads, one on the top and one on the bottom. And here's the sound of the drum itself. But I have a lever here on the side of the drum. When I push that lever, a set of wires down here called the snares come up 
and hit the bottom head and rest along the bottom head. When I hit the top, the vibration rattles those snares around. So it makes a different sound. So I'm going to turn the snares on now, and you might hear them. I'm going to do it kind of loudly. You might hear them touch the bottom head. Do you hear that? Now listen to the sound of the drum. It's very different. Now I can play loud sounds. I can play really soft sounds. Or I can play in between. What I can't do is control how long the sound is. Because I don't blow air into the drum or I don't have a bow that I can use. So this is a, a short note, and this is a long note. But drummers really wanted to play longer notes. So we came up with this thing called a roll. In a roll, you let the stick bounce on the head of the drum, like this. And if you do them close enough together and fast enough, they sound like a continuous sound. And you can play them softly or loudly. Now, Toby mentioned that we have a lot of non-pitched instruments in percussion. That means you can't play a melody on, the, on them like you could on the flute or the violin. But because drums and other percussion instruments come in different sizes, the bigger the size, the lower the sound. So the biggest drum that I play in the orchestra is the bass drum. It's a much bigger drum than the snare drum. It still has two heads, one on each side, but it doesn't have the snares. So the low sound needs a different kind of stick. So I have a stick with a, a sort of fuzzy piece of wool on the end, and it gets a rounder sound. It's not as bright or sharp a sound as the snare drum. And you can hear the difference just in the sound of the drum. Low here on the bass drum, high here on the snare drum. Now, in addition to drums, a lot of percussion instruments are made of metal. One of my favorite metal instruments is the circle. Oh wait, the rectangle. No, the triangle, that's right. Obviously because it was shaped like a triangle. I apologize to my 10th grade geometry teacher. Anyway, listen to the sound of the triangle and tell me how it's different from the sound of the snare drum. Well, you'll notice right away that the triangle sustains, it rings for a really long time. So unlike the snare drum where I have to work to make the sound continuous, on a triangle, I have to work to make the sound stop. And I'm gonna do that with this hand, like this. So I put my hand on it to stop the vibrations of the triangle. Now, like I said, Percussion instruments come in all different sizes. So this was a small triangle and I'm gonna clip it down to this music stand. Here's a larger triangle and it's going to have a lower sound. And it's going to spin around apparently. So we have a large sound and a high sound. From the smaller one. And we have to stop it. Another really cool metal instrument are these cymbals. These are called crash cymbals because you crash them together. So they're brass plates um, and they are kind of a loud sound, right? I can play loud, but I can also play soft. So here's a loud sound. And here's a soft sound. So some composers will use the cymbals when it's trying to be energetic and they'll play loud crashes. 
or maybe some mysterious kind of sound, softer and longer. And notice what I have to do. I can't use my other hand like I did on the triangle because I'm using both of them. So I have to use my stomach to stop the sound. Now, in addition to metal and skin, there's a third material, wood. So here is a wood block. Quite a great name, right? It's a piece of wood shaped like a block. Uh, we have to use another stick, uh, not like the snare drum stick, but with a little piece of, of plastic on the end, sort of soft plastic. And it makes kind of a hollow sound because you can see it's hollowed out a little bit here. Now again, I have a large one and I have a really, really small one here that sounds much higher. One special wooden instrument is called the temple blocks. Temple blocks come from Asia. And because a lot of Asian music has five notes in the melody, just five different ones, a set of temple blocks has five different blocks, from the smallest, which is going to be high, to the lowest, which is going to be, to, from the biggest, and it's going to be low. So you can play almost a melody on this. We call this relative pitch. So it's not like a melody you would play on the flute, but you can get an idea of higher and lower notes based on how big or how small the tempo blocks are. Now Tom, we have a question for you from a student who lives in Bakersfield, Vermont. Hi, my name is Maria. I'm 14 years old. I live in Bakersfield, Vermont. And my question is, in an orchestra, how do you decide what percussionist plays which part? That's a great question. Because I've been playing in the orchestra for a long time, it's my job to figure out who plays what instruments in which piece. Sometimes that's really easy because there'll be two parts and there'll be two players. But other times, there are two players and five or six parts. So then it's kind of like homework. I have to put all the parts out on a table and figure out which could be played so that you're not playing two or three things at the same time. And more importantly, so that we're not crashing into one another, running from instrument to instrument. And that's how it works. Thank you for explaining that, Tom. And thank you, Maria, for that great question. Next up, we have our friend Nick, who is super excited to share his collection of instruments with all of you. Hi, everybody. My name's Nick. Thanks, Toby. So today I'm going to show you some of the um, melodic instruments we have in the orchestra. I'm going to start with the xylophone. It's this really cool wooden instrument right here with these little wooden keys that we have. Underneath, we have these metal tubes, you can see. Those are called resonators. And we play this with mallets, just like this. Now, the, thing we, the reason we call it melodic is because because we can play scales on it, just like any other instrument. All right, so in the orchestra for percussion, you're going to hear us play melodies on these kind of, on these kind of instruments. So I'm going to play you one excerpt here called Porgy and Bess. This is from the overture for this great opera by George Gershwin. exciting thing. Sometimes xylophones is used in like cartoons and stuff you can hear for sound effects like like you know when they have like people running or like uh, or like when they blink their eyes 
And sometimes like it makes with the same kind of sound, you can make some, some kind of like awkward sound, right? Uh oh, right? So the xylophone has a lot of great sounds for it. In fact, in cartoon music, um, the Looney Tunes, which is like Bugs Bunny and all those guys, they, they have a tune just like that too. And um, they would play. This is a glockenspiel. Now the xylophone was made of wooden bars and had tubes underneath for resonators. The glockenspiel is made of metal or steel bars and it's just sitting inside a box and all the notes resonate inside that box. Now it has a really pretty, clean, nice sound. Now Mozart used the glockenspiel in one of his operas as an instrument called the celeste. Now on the glockenspiel we play the part of the magic bells from that opera. And the magic bells were great because when they were played they made the soldiers dance and dance away from the people who wanted to get through. So I'm going to play you part of that song right now. Another work for glockenspiel that's really fun for us percussionists is called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. I don't know if you remember that little mouse character who turned into a wizard and, and all the brooms were dancing with water and everything. But that song is by Paul Duca, And the song goes like this. It's a really fun song to hear. You can hear it. You can hear the little, the little wizard running around right now. And then later in the piece, all the brooms are marching through and they're throwing water all over the, the room and they're filling up the room with water and it's crazy. And the bell part is really exciting. Now we have a question for you from a student who lives in South Hero, Vermont. Hi, my name is Gwyneth. I'm 13 years old. I live in South Hero. And my question is, what is the most diverse percussion instrument you've ever played? Thanks for that question, Gwyneth. Hmm, one of the most diverse instruments I've ever played. I would have to say, it re this one really goes right up high on the list. This right here, I'm going to get way back because it's huge. This is called a barambao, and that was a long sapling of a tree and then I'm going to get up close. It's got a wire on it. It's like a bow and then it has this gourd, this resonator, which I painted myself. I made this one. Now you hold this thing really funny. You put your pinky on this rope here that holds the gourd on. Then you have a little stone in your hand and the stone pushes against that rope. And you'll see why in a sec. When I play like this, I play with the stick here. So when I push the stone against the rope, it changes the pitch. And one thing this gourd does that's really cool is when you move it in and out towards your, your chest or your stomach, There's another interesting percussion instrument that you may not be familiar with called the steel pan. Even though steel pans aren't part of the orchestra, they are played all over the world and used in many different styles of music. A musician who plays the steel pan is called a panist. 
The steel pan originated in Trinidad and Tobago, which is the southernmost island country in the Caribbean Sea. It is made from large cargo drums, which are huge barrels used for shipping things. Once the pan is cut from the cargo drum, its shiny surface is covered with dents. Panists strike the dents with rubber-tipped mallets to create different notes. What's cool about the steel pan is that it can sound like a mini orchestra all on its own. It may not look like much, but depending on the size and range of the pan, it is possible for one pan to create 32 different notes. Wow, what a unique looking instrument with such an interesting sound. And now we're going to turn it back over to the Vermont Symphony Orchestra musicians. The last instruments we're going to talk about in the percussion family are called the timpani, or the kettle drums. Our friend Jeremy plays the timpani, so let's hear what he has to say. Thank you so much, Mr. Toby. I am so excited to be here with all of our friends. I am the timpanist of the Vermont Symphony, and I'm going to share a little bit about my favorite instrument with you. So, the timpani originated in Europe in the 1300s. So it was a long time ago. And people played these small little pair of drums on horseback. Um, and they were used to signal different army calls, whether the army was in war or marching or whatever they were doing. And they would play something that resembled this. So as timpani developed, they got bigger, and they resemble what we see today. Um, it's standard to see four drums in the orchestra, and the role of the timpani is really interesting. We can do many different things. We provide rhythm. melodies, which is really unique to percussion instruments. So, another fun thing that percussionists can do is create moves. And the timpani is really important in that way in the orchestra. I can play something very happy, I could play something angry. And create many different moves. And actually something that's really fun that we get to do, and the only percussion instrument that can really do this, we get to play glissandos, which means we slide between two different notes. And we do this using the, the pedal. So, and it sounds like this. So, what I want to do for you is I want to play a very short solo that has a few different moods and I want you to come up with your own description of each little section. What does it make you feel? What do you think the purpose is? Is it melodic? Is it rhythmic? Is it angry? Is it sad? Is it happy? Is it mysterious? 
and I'm going to use all of the things that I told, told you about, and including glissandos. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks so much for teaching us about the timpani, Jeremy. Next up, we have a very special guest we'd like you all to meet. This is a percussion student who'd like to talk to you, our viewers, about what it's like to be a young musician. Well, hi there. Thank you so much for joining us. What's your name and how old are you? Hi, my name is Evelyn and I am 11 years old. Now, could you please tell us your instrument and tell everyone in the audience how long you've been playing? So I'm a percussionist, and today I'm going to be playing the marimba. I've been playing since third grade. Now, are there any accessories that you use for your instrument, or anything at home that you need for practicing and playing? Well, you use many different things for the different percussion instruments, like sticks, mallet, sometimes even your hands. But for marimba, you use a mallet, and it has to be yarn so it doesn't hurt the marimba. And when you hit each note, it sends out a vibration, which makes the sound of the note. Well, that's great. Now, can you tell us why you picked your instrument and where do you play and learn your instrument currently? I decided to be a percussionist because I've always had beats and rhythms going through my head. And it's just really fun because you can play in an orchestra and nice, easy, like calm music. And then you can just sit down on the drum set and just rock out. And currently, I am learning with Mr. Nick Canazaro. Well, that's absolutely fantastic. You must be really great. I've heard you've been practicing a piece you'd like to share with all of us. Could you tell us what it is and play it for us? So, my piece is Melody, and in this piece, you roll all notes.
Amazing! Hey everyone at home, can you clap and cheer with me once more for that wonderful performance? Now you must really love playing and practicing a lot to get that good. Now can you share with us what you love about making music? What's the best part about it? I love playing music because it's just really fun and it makes you happy and it makes other people happy. And would you encourage other kids at home to try it too? I would really encourage other kids to try it because before I was a percussionist, I started playing piano since kindergarten. And it's just nice and it helps you with your rhythms and beats before you become a percussionist. We really appreciate your willingness to share your music with us. And now for those of you that don't have a percussion instrument at home, but would like to try playing one, pay special attention to the next segment where I'm gonna show you how to make your very own soda can shaker at home. Once again, you're going to need an empty soda can, some uncooked rice or beans, a piece of paper, and tape. Now don't worry if you don't have those things on hand right now, because we'll post the recipe for making this on the VSO's website later. And now I'm gonna show all of you at home how to make your very own percussion instrument, a soda can shaker. The first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna grab our piece of paper and roll it into a funnel shape just like this. Then you're going to take your paper funnel and place it right over the top of the soda can right in the hole. Next up, you're gonna grab your dried rice or dried beans and carefully pour it into the funnel and into the can like this. Now, if you have some extra rice left over like I do, be sure to put it back into the bag like this. Once you've put your rice or dried beans into the can, take your piece of tape and cover the soda can hole like this. And there you have it everybody, a soda can shaker. Now when you play the soda can shaker, be sure to hold it sideways just in case any of those little bean or rice particles escape out of the hole. Now that's just about it for today's Musical Chairs, presented by Vermont Symphony Orchestra's Symphony Kids. I'd like to say a big thank you to our special guest musicians from the VSO, our young student musician, and the Vermont Teddy Bear Company, and to all of you for tuning in. Now orchestral music can be so much fun, and we want you to know that you, yes you, can be a part of it. We say goodbye with an arrangement for percussion of Vermont's state song, These Green Mountains, performed by our VSO musicians, Tom, Nick, and Jeremy. We encourage you to sing along at home and to tune in next week for our segment on some very interesting instruments that are visitors in the orchestra. Have a great day and see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.